Hi and welcome to my Python YouTube channel. It's awesome to have you here. If you like this video, a thumbs up would be great. And make sure to subscribe for future videos. I also have a blog at prospercoder.com with lots of cool stuff, so feel free to check it out. In the previous parts we saw how widgets on their own and widgets in layouts are positioned and scaled. Before we move on, let's recapitulate briefly on what we already covered about scaling and positioning. By the way, you can also read the written version of this video on my Python programming blog at prosperacoder.com. So if you want to scale a widget which is not inside the layout, you use the properties size, width and height. If you want to position such a widget, you should use the pass property. All these properties use fixed numbers of pixels. Now, if you want to scale a widget inside the layout, you should use one of the following properties size hint, size hint x, or size hint y. They are used with proportions rather than fixed numbers of pixels, so the value assigned to them should be between 0 and 1. If you want to position a widget inside layout, use the pass hint property to which you assign a dictionary with one or more of the following properties x, center x, right, for horizontal positioning, y, center y, top, for vertical positioning. The values are proportions again, so they should be in the range from 0 to 1. One more thing we discussed in the previous part is that proportions may be also outside the range from 0 to 1 if you want the widget or part of it to be outside the container. Fine, you already know how to scale and position widgets, both on their own and inside layouts. But there are still some more options to explore. Let's have a look at them now. First of all, we can use the X, center X, right, Y, center Y and top properties directly in layouts with fixed numbers of pixels. But then we shouldn't use the same properties in pass hint. Here's an example. Here's the QV code. We have a custom button with the size hint property. And then we have two instances of the custom button with X and Y set to the following values, 0 here and 200 here. Now, if we run this program, we will see the following. Let's have a look here to see what's going on. Now, the first button, X is set to 0. Y is set to 0, which means the left and the bottom borders are in the bottom left corner. Now, the second button here, the X property is 200, so the left border of the button is 200 pixels away from the left border of the container. And the same with the bottom border of the button, which is now 200 pixels above the bottom border of the container. And now, if you resize the window, you will see that although the size changes because it's proportional size set using this size hint property, but the position doesn't change. This button is always in the bottom left corner and this button, I mean this part of the button, the bottom left corner of the button is always 200 pixels away from the left border and from the bottom border, regardless of how big or small the window is. Fine. Now let's talk about using the X, center X, right, Y, center Y and top properties outside layouts. Well, some time ago we were using the X, Y, right and top properties on the root object. It was in the part about custom widgets. Here is the code again. Here's a Python file. My custom button, my custom widget, my custom widget is returned. And here is the QV file. So here we have the my custom button class and here we have the my custom widget class. Now here the properties refer to the root object. Root is my custom widget. If you run this program, you will see the following.
Now try resizing the window and watch carefully how the elements behave. So let's have a look at the code again. So the positions of these three widgets are always relative to the root. Okay. And now let's rewrite the code as follows. Instead of the past property, let's use x with a value of 20. And let's use y with a value of 400. Now, my custom button, the first instance here, instead of this pass property, let's use center x with a value of 60. And center y with a value of 20. Finally, here, Let's use right with a value of 300 and top with a value 20. Now let's run this app, save and run. Okay, now let's have a look at the Kiwi file again to see what's going on. And now you will see this. So, the first widget is this text input. The X property is set to 20, which means the left border of this widget is 20 pixels from the left. Now the Y property is set to 400, which means the bottom border of the widget is 400 pixels above the bottom border of the container. Now the first custom button, which is over here, now the center X property is set to 60, which means this center point of the button is 60 pixels from the left. Now the center Y property is 20, which means vertically the center of the button is 20 pixels above the bottom border of the container. Now the third widget is the second button. Here the right property is set to 300, which means the right border of this button is always 300 pixels away now here the top button is 20, which means the top border of this button is 20 pixels above the border of the container. As you can see, this border is at the same height as the center of this button, because here the top is 20 pixels above the button, and here the center Y is 20 pixels above the bottom. Now let's talk about using the pass property inside layouts. The pass property is usually used for widgets, not for layouts. However, you can use it for a layout if you need a fixed number of pixels. Then, however, you must remember to not use the pass hint or otherwise it will override pass. Here's an example. First, the Python code is very simple. And here's the Kiwi file. Here we have a custom button and the flow layout with two instances of the custom button and each button has the pass property set to a given number of pixels. Now, if we run this program, you will see the buttons over here. Okay. Now, here the positions are in fixed numbers of pixels. So the first button is 20 pixels from the left and 50 pixels from the bottom. And the second button is 500 pixels from the left and from the bottom. Now, if you resize the window, the positions of the buttons won't change because they will always be these fixed amount of pixels away from the appropriate borders of the container. Now what about using the size, width and height properties inside layouts for scaling? You can also use the size, width and height properties for scaling in layouts. You must remember, however, to set the size hint, size hint X or size hint Y for size, width and height respectively to none. In case of size hint, 
you should actually set it to none none to a tuple of two values. Otherwise, it won't take effect. Have a look here. Here we have two buttons and a float layout. And if we run the application with the same Python code as before, you will see this. So, as you can see, although we set the size to the same value for both buttons, 200 by 20, and here 200 by 20, it only works for button 2. This is because we didn't set the first button size hint property to none none. Here we have none none for the second button, and this is why this works. So, let's fix it and let's set it here. Okay. And now, if we run the program again, it will work for both buttons. And now watch what will happen if we change just one line of code. Here, instead of using the size hint property, I will use the size hint x property and set it to none. Fine. And now, if I run this program now, you will see that. Now, for the first button, we only set the size hint x property to none, not size hint. This will cause the size property to take effect only partially in horizontal direction. So, now you know all you need about positioning and scaling widgets, both inside and outside layouts. I'm using the plural form layouts here, although the only layout we've been using so far is float layout. In the next part, we'll have a look at the other layouts that we'll be making use of in our application. Okay, that's it for this video. If you like it, a thumbs up would be great. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos. If you want to leave a comment or ask a question, you're welcome to do so. Thanks for watching.